So here we have, is it the OnlyFans? It's not the OnlyFans. I mean, sorry, what OnlyFans? Oh fans? no. Yeah. Oh, oh, the boys have prepared to <laughs> ambush me in the stream. Yeah, so so there are two sites, Michael Bell, your gaming bell, your bell, that we've discovered from the previous weekend. There is, of course, first, the happy professional Michael Bell we all know and love. And this will load eventually. Now I'm trying I'm trying to see the game for me is like wildest loads. Look at that. Ah, yeah, there we Look go. Oh, oh geez, I was see at that point. I can tell. I you know, I have a feeling we were both like someone pointed out, like, why does Ian have a Mardi? I didn't know that was a Mardi Gras thing. Um I to be honest, I actually don't even know what Mardi Gras is. All I know is people who is that not Tuesday? <laughs> people who generally would be like a bit villainous and buffy probably like it. Because I think it involves a lot of alcohol. I'm not it, sure. it does. It's a big party. I can't yes. remember where. You can tell how much of uh, yes, how, how cultured I am. <laughs> yeah. So there they are. They're very. They're very happy. This place looks wonderful, full of happy things. That is the Marriott. Yes, that's the professional. Value. Now, I have the other one, and he knows exactly what this is. This is his true colors. Now, is this going to be? Is this going to be the Annie one or the Slute one? It's probably going to be the Slute one. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely going to be one of them. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's yes. the salute one. Yeah. Now, in my defense, <laughs> this was uh, this was day two. I was very jet lagged. Um, the first day, uh, me and Jay the Bard were the last people up at the Hilton. Impressive. Uh, the next day, I feel like we were at least in the cohort of being the last up because this is like half four in the morning at Denny's. Basically, I remember like the lovely juicy sweetness of that pancake and uh and then i'm like <laughs> fucking ted's in front of me like listen this is a really funny photo um your permission <laughs> i'm like oh, okay i'll sign the form that's like there's no form um hmm. yes yes yeah i mean it's not really a proper evening if someone doesn't pass it at some point like oh yeah like, like see pretty. after this i was like and i'm back okay and then i went to sleep it's great <laughs> Yes. Great. Um, and then basically we just, uh, I think I was in the last cohort every, maybe every single night of the con. I think on Sunday night we ended up, uh, so the Marriott bar, Sunday's where I met Ian. So that first photo. Uh, when we were in the Marriott bar and then it closed. So we go to the Hilton and then the Hilton's at the dregs. Um, but then, I don't know how this happened, but it was worked out by the collective intelligence of the group which, you know, there was a lot of it to, to go around, that the place we could go to was the fifth floor of the Hilton, which is where there is a outdoor swimming pool that obviously was locked, so that's why I'm still alive. Uh, I was actually, I was wondering. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I know why we got, got in the mood for it, because uh, Adam, who runs Ever Ember, um, who, uh, you know, if you watch our Clips channel, that's all them, um, he was like, hey, I got a hot tub. That can only be used before 10 p.m., because apparently that's in like the Airbnb agreement. And if not, you get in giga trouble. So we were all just like, oh, <laughs> so it was at that stage of like, let's. <laughs> okay, so we didn't go to the Hilton pool. That would be very stupid. But we did. It was just like there was like this little like fucking underground party going on. <laughs> um, there, there, al there always is. And there then, is. yeah, no, it was I think the next two nights I spent with um, Kaxman, Dunkirk and co. At, uh, at the Marriott. And that's how my voice went. So well, it's con. It's a time. It's actually very fun. Very fun. I have con energy where I can just have like three hours of sleep for like four nights in a row. And then, oh, you should have seen it on Tuesday. I could barely move. At Tuesday, but the thing was, it wasn't a hangover. It was just profound cosmic tiredness. I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. I know, what, I know what you mean. It gets it gets rough, but it's uh, it's hard to beat. That energy is astounding. And I think actually there's a lot of that energy from... Like Metzen and from Ian and from everyone and like the team, I think an awful lot of that does come down to being a BlizzCon. Because remember that they haven't had a BlizzCon physically since 2018, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. that's four years of that's for especially if you've worked there and you've went to BlizzCon every year. That is four years without seeing any physical response to what your game actually is doing with people or for people. Yeah. They imagine the withdrawal symptoms of a yearly event where you get massive amounts of, basically you get massive amounts of praise and positive feedback. I'm sure there's negative feedback given too, but you get that like you put energy out and you go, it gets back to you and you feel it and you get none of that, just cold turkey for four years. And then you come back, surely that's going to hit like a bus and surely you're going to be like, people, 
especially because so much of COVID was bad times for the team. So you imagine coming out like at the, the BlizzCon here and talking to people and then going, we really like what you're doing with Dragonflight. The amount of relief you must feel from that. You could see why I imagine half the, obviously they've been like nervous. I could sense stuff, a bit of relief going I, around. I could imagine the devs were like just riding that high the whole week of, or the whole like couple of days. Like I, this is good. This is our community that we work for. These are the people that we serve which is something that you're not going to feel whenever you're, you know, going back to, like, you're, you're sit there in your in your room making your stuff when you're working remotely. You're not going to have the same vibe of, okay, well, here's how you go. So you see a community and you go, okay, well, actually, it's a reminder of the people that you serve, in a way. So, yeah, energy. Energy is the the biggest thing with BlizzCon. The energy was absolutely fucking brilliant. Um and I, like so my experience with BlizzCon obviously like lots of uh you know going around the Hilton and the Marriott and stuff like that um obviously going around the con itself all very good all very fun um I believe with the con they had like some issues with uh queuing stuff like that getting into the Dark Moon Fair so you know the, you know sort of things like that if you were really there for the big full Diablo expansion reveal I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry you guys didn't get that, but hey, the teaser I saw, or you know, we all saw was, I mean, it looked pretty sick. Um, but yes, uh, no, it's it's very fun. Everybody feels a tremendous sense of uh, of energy, which I, I mean, I think is like the, the strongest part of it. I certainly, you know, got that sense from like uh, a lot of devs that I talked to, which was very cool. Um, I suppose for a lot of Blizzard staff too, um, maybe the ones who have joined the team like a bit more recently, this may be the first time to actually go there and, you know, like, ah, just have it, you know, kind of be in physical space, which I think is like kind of important. You know, it's it's that thing where, uh, like remote's a really good option and I am not in favor of uh, forcing not remote, but there is some stuff where, um, you know, being in person is just vital. And it's that sense of energy. As an example, uh, there are certain key creative roles and lead roles that I will never have as a remote role. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, to dig into that, we'll be talking about, like, the how differently it is to, like, brainstorm and chat ideas in person because you get all the body language and stuff. But yeah, it's that's, like, I, I but need that's to not be, even something I'm thinking about. I need to be in the same case. city as a, you know, like on game stuff if me and thomas were living in a different city yeah but it's like it's not even that that i'm thinking about here as much i'm thinking about like as uh, who was it said was it someone there said recently that yoshi p talked about that for fan fest oh uh, yeah it was nino saying yoshi p has talked about this actually he said fan fest is the biggest reason why he does what he does and that's to me it's a lot about the motivation and like the energy of other people where imagine it's a case of you're a musician and you release loads of albums, but you never tour, and you never get to see people jam out to what you're playing live. That's bound to be different to the to the musicians who play live and see a crowd like reacting to their energy, who show up for what they do. Yeah, the difference there is like completely insane. And I know people are just, uh, talking chat about like the price being too high and the portal pass being a disappointment, and a lot of people complaining on Reddit. Oh, yeah, it was like so that. funny with a portal pass. They yeah. clearly. Um, like, they clearly knew that there was not great sentiment. And on the second day, they're like, we're going to throw plushies and executives at you. But it's that thing you could tell. So I believe more was outsourced. Um, but I think part of that is because, like, it used to be with BlizzCon, it was entirely ran by Blizzard staff. You know, they would be doing security. They would be doing booths. Um, and, you know, I think, like, booths and stuff, they're still, like, I don't know if they were doing security. Maybe that was all. But anyway, um, I think they, like, they went with some new provider or something, which, in a way, does make sense. And uh, even take, uh, I've forgotten her name, Alex Frostwolf on Twitter, who now, well, at least at one point, moved to Respawn Entertainment. Like, she is somebody who did a lot of planning for BlizzCons. No longer at the company. So probably a lot of institutional knowledge uh, sort of left out. Um, ultimately, if you want to do that right, you want to start, you know, you want to look at the theme parks, you know, you want to start thinking about, like, how does Universal run Halloween Horror Nights? What things are ticketed? What are, you know, um, what can you fast pass? Uh, and I suppose all of that stuff. It's extra challenging when it's only two days. And you have a lot of people who've got to say, get to the Dark Moon Fair. 
So certainly, I think on an op site, some of that stuff wasn't particularly great. I know at the meet and greets, the security were like brutal. Uh, it definitely annoyed, I think, a lot of us. And also, I mean, I can't speak for the CMs, obviously, but it was frustrating how much the, you know, the security were like being kind of dicks to people. Um, so yeah, there's definitely operational things to get better. The portal pass in its current form doesn't really make sense. Um, they, they need to work out how to do that properly. So yeah, there's like lots of room for improvement, um, in the actual con. I, I think as with so many cons, um, uh, it's like, as an example, QCon and Belfast to me was always a bit shit because I was with people who would just go and, you know, do the things at the con. Like, oh, we're going to go and do the QCon pub quiz. But in reality, what would make QCon good is whatever demon shit you and your <laughs> strange international group of people that sometimes appear uh, go and do. Oh, That's what, like, uh. it's got nothing to do with the con organizers. In a way, the whole thing's just a big old excuse for, uh, for a big old bash, right? So for so many people, that's what BlizzCon uh, is, right? It's kind of like rare to walk into a room where you basically get everybody. And if you're like a Warcraft player, uh, I think Warcraft is quite strongly represented at BlizzCon. It always has been. Whatever the WoW people, you know, someone says, ah, Warcraft thing. The WoW people are generally the loudest of the audiences. I mean, bl Blizzard. Of course. Bl like bl Blizzard's a lot of things, but Blizzard is Warcraft more than it is anything else. And they know that. That's why at least they now know that you know that's why Diablo three to Diablo four took so long because they needed to perfect it, but they were okay without it. That's why StarCraft is dead in the water for the foreseeable future. That's why the only thing they really have is Warcraft. Stargate. Is because that's what it is. Yeah, um, but the uh, to really because I've been thinking of this quite a lot actually, and I think the the biggest way to describe it is and I've. Uh, not to go into it too deeply, but there's a whole big... We largely as people live inside our brains now and live in computers and we don't live in our bodies as much. There's a whole like loss of somatic understanding. We don't understand our own physical feelings and things like that. There's a lot of like different different things are felt in the different parts of the body and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's why a lot of people are into like yoga now and how people like go to yoga and then start crying their eyes out. And it's like, oh yeah, there's actually loads of like guilt trapped in your hips that's now released. And that sounds hokey, <laughs> but there's some element of truth there, right? <laughs> and the what are your hips guilty for i am <laughs> deeply suspicious i'm not sure that's quite true but it's something along those lines but <laughs> but the thing i'm trying to say is we forget how important that physicality and that energy is to be in a mm -hmm. room full of people who are your people to be to to be in a room where in some capacity you feel like you actually belong so there's when an you have interesting a community that you're there with there's an the interesting feeling that, that comes with that is absolutely and utterly second to none so it's like if someone's doing work from home in my head i'm just thinking like what's the you know what's the reason um, and, you know, like in many cases, you know, there, there is a very good reason, such as you want to locate non-regional talent, tap into that, which obviously, like, you know, we've done. Or, you know, maybe you have family concerns and things like that. You know, shit you've got to be on top of, and it's a genuine, very large inconvenience. However, there are some people for whom work from home ends up being excused to do quiet quitting. Yeah. Um, in which case, certainly, like, in the future, the thing I've learned is, second I work that out, I'm working out how you're gone, you know, because, and that's the sort of thing. It's hard to quiet quit um, in physicality. Mm. So yeah, there's certainly, there's plenty of interesting things, I suppose, as we get into, uh, into all of that. Uh, I guess the core point though is um, when you are all around uh, and, and together, there is an energy. It's just, you know, the way like, crowds and sport events like there is a uh you know it transitions to a different type of energy like when people are you know at a concert yeah and it's just like you're like that dude's a data scientist look what he's doing or like how is a phd hopping about like that and it turns out the raw energy <laughs> Kind of weird. You're like, yeah, data scientists. They can't be having fun outside. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. What they've got a doctorate? Aren't they sitting quietly reading? What For like, you know, <laughs> BlizzCon's like that's a bunch of World of Warcraft players. What the fuck are they doing outside talking to each other? Because that's totally how I feel. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. It is. It is that. And I think the, the important part is that's pretty major for how people actually like how people feel 
good about things and why they get deep into a community and obviously that's the kind of thing of World of Warcraft in whole. Liz Collins so, like going to the church. That's it. And the other thing is like my you know my level yeah, of energy yeah. after uh, after that was okay. This is really cool. We got to go and get into the empire business. Mm. By which I mean, we need to build something a lot fucking bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like, you know, a lot bigger, bigger, so that that kind of thing, you know, and how the hell do we go from BlizzCon vibes to quiet quitting? Um, I, I, I don't know. But, well, I, I think it's like that, like, level of very large excitement and, you know, all of that stuff, uh, you know, that happens um you know in person that's like whatever a whole bunch of things are in alignment and i suppose i bring up quiet quitting because it's like if you're going to be quiet quitting you may as well quit your job um and uh instead of being probably very sad and a leech go and find uh you know a type of work that you like actually enjoy and have passion for that you know you feel like you can actually grow truly because i don't think people grow whenever there's a quiet quitting thing going on Mm -hmm. Which I know probably people be like, oh, capitalist. Like, uh, well, I do, in fact, run a business. And uh, part of the thing that's good about that is actually providing jobs. And, you know, that kind of thing. If you remove it from the perspective of capitalism and kind of anti-work and stuff, to me, it's more about people who quite, people who are quite quitting probably aren't self-actualizing and satisfied. But if you work for something that you actually feel inspired for, and obviously you can, you know, you know, uh, people don't boss. quit jobs; they quit managers. Big true, yeah, humongo so, true. Yeah, so not to get bogged down the topic, but I think the 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 direction I was trying to go with that talking with BlizzCon is more about if you get to talk to people who love your game, the, as a developer, that's going to revitalize you. You're going to go wait. You're going to hear. Yeah. Stuff. You're you're going to have someone say, "Oh, I really like what you did with that quest line because that." you know, that was like kind of important to me. I really like what you did. Maybe it's literally just, oh, I liked the, the way you wrote that. You're, you know, you're or it get, could be that meant a lot to me because of the subject matter. Cause you'll, you'll get some of that it. from a tweet. You'll yeah. get some of that from a positive article in PC Gamer or yeah. some of that from a positive YouTube video. Probably, you know, maybe more from the tweet in the YouTube video than the article, right? Because it's a bit closer. It's a bit more social. Um, but yeah, there's just like that sort of, X factor, that bit of like human soul that can only happen whenever people are actually looking into each other's eyes. And I know Mark Zuckerberg wants like, you know, he wants you to be wearing the helmet that somehow is like facial scan. You know, the whole like, I am going to talk with Lex Friedman in the metaverse. And it's like, we're both there. And then you look at me like, your cold, dead eyes. <laughs> Even though there's a bit of me where it's like, hey, if you're relatives the other side of the world, that'd be a pretty dope way to say hello to them. Yeah, you know, not gonna. I'm not gonna shed on it too much. The yeah. tax cool. Yeah. So exactly, Tybar. You'll never. You'd never see the shine in their eyes, and that shine in their eyes is important. And that's what I think BlizzCon brings to a lot of people. So you could see why there's the energy. I'm just like, yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. <laughs>